Humanity will once again visit the moon. The mission is planned for 2024. In this crew, we'll see the first women step on the moon. The main goal is to establish a lunar base for continued research that will help NASA prepare for an upcoming mission to Mars. Has been planning a crewed flight to the red planet set for the 2030s. Robotic rovers did a good job exploring the Martian surface. But astronauts will have to dig deeper to find evidence of water and any fossils proving microscopic life was once possible on our planetary neighbor. New data on Earth-like planets Since its launch in 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered lots of exoplanets orbiting distant stars. Some of them have an Earth-like mass, composition, and orbits. NASA plans to launch a new generation of telescopes in the 2040s. They'll help us find real twins of our planet and even get pictures of their surfaces. The return of Halley's Comet It'll be another 41 years before we once again see the most famous comet in the sky. Halley's visits us every 75 years, so some will manage to see it twice in their lifetime. The longest solar eclipse 166 years from now, I'll still be around then, <laughs> the sun will go dark for 7 minutes and 29 seconds. This is pretty close to the predicted maximum. It'll also be the longest eclipse human civilization has ever witnessed in its 10,000 years. Arrival of the most notorious asteroid 1950 DA was once the most probable candidate among near-Earth objects we know to actually strike the planet. Fortunately, the chance was later estimated to be not even a tenth of a percent. It'll most likely pass by on March 16, 2880, mark your calendars, and it'll become a solid evidence that we're safe for a while. The asteroid is more than a mile in diameter, enough to take out life on a planet. A new North Star? The Earth spins like a top. Watch one of these toys closely, and you'll see how its tip starts to draw circles in the air. The Earth's axis, an imaginary line going through the poles, goes full circle once every 26,000 years. It points at different stars along the way, thus changing the North Star. By the year 3000, the Gamma Cephei star will share this title with Polaris, as the Earth's axis will point right between them. The first near-Earth supernova Antares is the 15th brightest star in the night skies. It's also an old red supergiant, 12 times larger than the Sun. Stars this massive age to a point where they collapse in on themselves, producing huge supernovas. For Antares, this will happen just 10,000 years from now, which is nothing for a 12-million-year-old star. The resulting burst will be too far away to affect life on this planet negatively. But the light show will be visible here on Earth even during the day. Message to the Universe Delivered Arecibo is the encoded message describing humanity, life on Earth, and the advancement of our scientific knowledge. It was broadcast from the Arecibo radio telescope and aimed at the center of the M13 cluster 25,000 light years away from us. In 25,000 years, it'll finally reach its destination. A new, closest star About 36,000 years from now, the Ross 248 star will become our new closest neighbor. It'll be just three light years away from us and overtake the title from Proxima Centauri, which is a bit more than four light years away. Ross 248 will remain the nearest star for around 9,000 years and then move away once again. So, you didn't like the neighborhood or what? The first interstellar human-made object In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will reach a point within 1.5 light-years of the Gliese 445 star. It successfully reached interstellar space in 2013. But unfortunately, it won't be able to power up any of its systems somewhere beyond the year 2025. Voyager 1 has a message too, a recording of greetings in 55 languages, music from classical to rock and roll, and sounds of the Earth's wildlife. A bear Saturn 100,000 years from now, Saturn will lose its beautiful rings. 
It'll happen gradually over time as the planet's colossal gravity pulls rocks and ice from this belt floating around it. They'll all eventually fall and get crushed and burned by Saturn's atmosphere. Well, how rude! The ring system is in the middle of its life cycle, so we're incredibly lucky we got to see it in its full glory. The most frightening supernova The WR-104 star will burst into a supernova in 3,000 years. This star is 75,000 light-years away from us, and the blast won't touch us at all. But there is a small chance it'll also produce a gamma-ray burst in the process. If this stream of energy happens to aim right at us, it will negatively affect life on Earth. Good news? Scientists say that's very unlikely. Colliding moons The moons of Uranus are part of a highly unstable system. Some of them have orbits that cross paths. Uranus already has two rings of debris from past collisions of its natural satellites. Desdemona and Cressida will crash into each other in the next million years and produce new rings. A star too close for comfort. The rogue Gliese 710 star is approaching our solar system, and it will get just one light year away in 1.3 million years. This won't have a major impact on the planets, but it could disturb the so-called Oort cloud, which surrounds our solar system and is full of comets. From Earth, the star will look like the brightest planets we see now, and we'll see many more comets in the skies. The closest star to ever go supernova Within a few million years, the Spica star, which is only 240 light-years from us, will burst into a supernova. Supernova are a problem for life when they're three times closer than that, but the supernova itself will shine in the Earth's skies as bright as a full moon. A time capsule for future generations The Logios-1 satellite was launched back in 1976 to gather information about the exact shape of the Earth and tectonic plate movement. But it also contained information about civilization on Earth at the time. It'll re-enter our atmosphere in 8.4 million years. If humanity is around then, they'll learn how life on Earth was in our time. Well, at least how it was some 40 years ago. Rings for Mars Mars' moon, Phobos, orbits really close to the surface, and it continues to get two feet closer every century. 50 million years from now, it'll collide with Mars, resulting in a massive amount of debris going into orbit and forming a ring system around the red planet. Oh, can't wait for that. Days on Earth will get longer. No, really? 1.4 billion years ago, the Moon was much closer to our planet. It made the Earth rotate faster, so the day was only 18 hours. The Moon is continuously moving away from Earth. In 180 million years, we'll gain one extra hour. In a little over 2 billion years, a day on Earth will be 36 hours long. No more solar eclipses. 600 million years into the future, the Moon will move away from the Earth too far to cover the Sun during eclipses. Those will become ancient relics. The Sun will get too bright. It'll take about a billion years for the Sun to raise its luminosity by 10%. This will be devastating for planets in the solar system, and life on Earth won't be possible beyond this point. By then, our species will likely have found a new planetary home. The Sun will swallow the inner planets. In 5 billion years, the Sun will begin to evolve into a red giant, growing hundreds of times its current size. It'll swell up so much, it will eventually engulf Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. The new Goldilocks habitable zone may shift to the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn. This process will take a bit under 3 billion years until the Sun reaches its maximum size. After that, our star will shrink into a white dwarf. The most epic event ever Around the same time our Sun is swelled up, the nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, will come too close to the Milky Way. If we could watch our galactic neighbor at this time, it'll get larger and larger as it approaches. Then, the two galaxies will start to merge. Bright blue stars will burst into life. New constellations will form. The two spiral galaxies will now be a single giant elliptical one. Wow, 
I've set an alarm on my smartphone so I don't miss it. Hey Mythbusters, today we're debunking some classic space myths. Hop on the next space shuttle and let's get to the bottom of these tales once and for all. Picture this, you're floating weightlessly in space, sipping on a cup of delicious hot chocolate, when a peculiar thought pops into your head. Can you scream in outer space? And if yes, would anyone hear that scream? If you've watched the movie Alien, then you know the answer to this one. You can't hear sounds in outer space. It's not that sounds don't exist. It's just that you can't hear them. There's no one better to clarify this myth than Chris Hadfield. He's been on a couple of spacewalks during his life as an astronaut. And once you're out there in the darkness of space, you can't hear anything. All you hear is silence. Complete silence. But hey, just around the corner is a massive ball of explosion, aka the sun. We just can't hear the explosions happening because there's no medium for sound to travel through. It would be quite uncomfortable for an astronaut, though, if they could hear all the noises going on in outer space. Now, imagine you're zipping through space, feeling like a futuristic superhero, when a shooting star passes by your side. But wait, is it really a star? Unfortunately, shooting stars are not stars at all. They are small space rocks known as meteoroids, entering Earth's atmosphere and creating a stunning light show. Oh, and since we're debunking myths, let's head straight for another one. You've probably heard that meteors only crash into Earth on extremely rare occasions. Like once every dinosaur extinguishing apocalypse. That's not true. Scientists estimate that about 48 tons of meteoritic material fall on Earth each day. But almost all of this material is vaporized in Earth's atmosphere. The bright trail we see in the night sky is what we popularly call a shooting star. Next time you make a wish upon a shooting star, remember, you're actually hoping on a tiny piece of space debris. It's not so romantic after all. Can we or can we not fly into the stratosphere on air balloons? Apparently, we can. The Earth's stratosphere starts relatively close to the ground, about 7 or 8 miles up from the Earth's surface but it continues a long way up. If you were to fly yourself all the way into the stratosphere with some type of air balloon, just make sure you have really good equipment at hand. You'll need a special suit and some breathing devices because air starts to get pretty thin the higher you get. Of course, if you do go all the way up, you need to get a picture of the Earth's curvature. So take a chest harness with you where you can put a special camera or something like that. And how about you live stream the whole thing? That would be a first! Imagine it's been 102 days since you left Earth. You've adapted well to life in outer space, but something weird is happening to your body. You're getting taller. How is that even possible? Don't stress about it, it's completely normal. The truth of the matter is, you're not getting taller. This is what happens to your body when it's not under the effect of gravity. Our body has natural space between vertebrae and joints. On Earth, this space is almost completely squeezed due to the force of gravity. But in space, your body gets some time off of the pushing force of gravity and begins to stretch more and more. So yes, astronauts can grow up to 3% taller when they're on long missions. And here's a curiosity, NASA has that all covered when they're tailor-making spacesuits, of course. This way, astronauts will always have extra space in their suits. Once astronauts are back on Earth, the anti-gravity effect will wear off. So maybe they'll spend a few days wearing capri pants before it fits perfectly on their bodies again. Never have I ever pictured an airplane door bursting open mid-flight and a bunch of passengers being sucked into the atmosphere like flying feathers. Well, I'm betting most of you have had similar thoughts when getting inside a plane. Now imagine if this were to happen in outer space. Common knowledge says that if an astronaut is sucked out of an airlock, this person would be burnt to a crisp. Brace yourselves, because this is not only true, but the reality of it is way worse. According to astronaut Chris Hadfield, this is what would happen. 
The part of your body in the shade of the sun would experience temperatures of negative 418 degrees Fahrenheit, while the part of you getting sunlight would burn at around 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Your lungs would collapse and your blood would start to boil like tea water. So you would burn, freeze, lose your ability to breathe and boil. Yikes! How many times have you heard that astronauts have to work out every second of every day, otherwise they'll pass out? This is a complete myth. Remember we talked about gravity earlier? Due to the lack of gravity in outer space, our bodies don't have to do any heavy work. Our torsos don't have to sustain the weight of our heads. And we don't have to make any effort to move our legs because, essentially, there's no walking in outer space. Now imagine living like that for six months, or even a year of your life. Your muscles could turn into jello. That's why astronauts work out. They'll strap themselves and run on a treadmill, or they'll do some weightlifting in a special machine. This way, their muscles won't feel the lack of gravity too much. They do need to keep hydrated, though. You know what? If I was an astronaut, I'd ask NASA if I could take my super soft water flask up into space with me. You've probably heard that space smells like burnt steak or barbecue sauce. Now, as much as this sounds absurd, this myth is more true than it is false. Astronauts obviously can't smell space when they're in it because they can't take off their helmets. They usually smell it once a space vehicle docks and they open up a hatch. Apparently, what causes this smell is the presence of hydrocarbons that float around in space. Who would have thought, huh? Hey, smart people, let me ask you a question. Do you really think that if astronauts fly at the speed of light, they won't age a single second? I knew you'd say no. Let's get a few things straight. First of all, we haven't figured out how to operate vehicles at the speed of light. This would require an immense amount of energy and we don't have the technology to do that. Second, even if we managed to send a human inside a spacecraft that traveled at the speed of light, this person would still age. They would age differently than the people who remained on Earth, that's a fact, but they would still age. Do you lot really think there's such a thing as immortality? Nah. If you've seen the first Avatar, then you certainly remember that humans only managed to get to Pandora because they traveled in cryosleep. In other words, they froze their bodies, put them in a cryo bed, and traveled for years without aging. Yes, this sounds amazing, but we still don't have the technology to do that. Our bodies are mainly made out of water, right? And when you freeze water, it expands. That's why you should never leave soda cans unattended in your freezer. Right now, if we froze a person's body, the water inside of it would expand, harming tissues and organs. So no, we can't cryosleep our way into interstellar travel. Not yet, at least. Here's a crazy thought. What would happen if an astronaut took a drone with him on one of their spacewalks? Unless it's a NASA-designed drone, maybe the thing would freeze and burn like humans would if they went into space without a suit. But hey, a person can dream, can't they? On August 2, 1996, huge, mysterious patterns appeared on an agricultural field in Chiseldon, England. No one knew what kinds of symbols those were and who left them. As soon as the local news reported this, people immediately began to make their guesses. The most popular version was a message from a civilization living on another planet. The first crop circles appeared in the 70s in many areas across the US and England. Some compared these symbols to the writings of the ancient Maya. Others thought those were messages about the approaching apocalypse. But few doubted that their authors were from another civilization. But that geometric pattern in Chiseldon was different from all the others because of an event that happened eight years later. In 2004, a man from New Mexico found a strange stone 11 miles from Roswell. The rock had the same pattern on it as the crop circle in Chiseldon. It's worth noting that Roswell became a famous place after, according to rumors and legends, a spaceship from another planet crashed there. Therefore, when the farmer found the stone and posted its photo on the internet, many people thought it was part of that spaceship. The stone was perfectly smooth, and the pattern was applied with incredible precision. 
But the most remarkable thing was its magnetic properties. It rotated counterclockwise when people put the magnet next to its northern part. When they left the magnet near the southern side, the stone turned in the other direction. Computed tomography and x-rays showed that there hadn't been any elements inside the stone that could cause rotation. It was just a smooth piece of rock. But was the Roswell rock really part of a spaceship? To answer this question, we need to move to England, the year 1976. An artist named Doug Bauer met his friend Dave Corley and invited him to create an impressive performance. At that time, people only learned about strange patterns in the fields from some books and records. And of course, none of these cases had been confirmed. The two friends understood that all this was nothing more than myths. Therefore, they decided to draw a big pattern in a wheat field in Wiltshire. Now, they didn't expect this drawing to become so popular. Many newspapers began to write about mysterious circles. Hundreds of reporters filmed it on their cameras, and people watching TV were shocked. From that moment on, crop circles became a cultural phenomenon. People mixed facts with fiction and created more and more unbelievable legends. Someone said that they had seen mysterious lights in the sky above the circles. In any case, those two friends continued to draw patterns and revealed their secret only in 2009. They also created the mysterious drawing in Chiseldon. But that Roswell rock wasn't their job. Anyway, they said that the stone was also a fake. Other artists could draw the same pattern on the rock using stone-cutting equipment. One of the most mysterious books in the world is the Voynich Manuscript. Nobody knows who its author was, but they wrote it in the 15th century. No one can understand the contents of this manuscript, consisting of 240 pages for more than 500 years. Now, just imagine all the words were written in hand in an unknown language. Almost every page is decorated with strange images of female figures and weird unknown plants. The book was first discovered in 1912 and immediately became a cultural phenomenon. Many scientists, polyglots, and historians have tried to decipher the language and understand its meaning. They put it on the internet so everyone could try to solve the mystery. And it seems that Nicholas Gibbs, a historian and writer, managed to do this. He spent many years studying medieval Latin language and literature. Gibbs noticed the manuscript contained Latin abbreviations often used in medieval medical papers and reference books. Gibbs even found out that the book was a plagiarism of other older medical reference works. He compared the Voynich manuscript with other Latin books and found many similar words. Gibbs claimed that the manuscript was dedicated to women's health, and the mysterious flowers were real herbs and plants. But it wasn't that simple. Nicholas Gibbs was one of many who put forward the theory. Many scientists recognized his version as banal and unconvincing. Other decoders claimed that some secret code was used in the manuscript. Some were sure it was written by Dominican nuns. Others described it as a reference book on astrology and herbs. Anyway, you can find scans of the manuscript in high resolution on the internet and try to crack the code yourself. Imagine that you're walking around New York and entering a dark, deserted alley. Then you see some canvas with a beautiful picture on it lying in a trash can. You don't really understand what exactly is depicted there, but you still feel some power of art emanating from it. You take the painting home and hang it on the wall. It's been hanging there almost four years. Then you publish a photo with the painting on the website with antiques and discover that this picture is a missing masterpiece worth $1 million. This is a real story that happened to a New Yorker in 2003. Famous Mexican artist Rufino Tamayo painted this picture called Three People in 1970. One collector bought it as a gift for his wife. But in 1989, someone stole the work while they were moving to a new house. It was possible that the thief didn't appreciate this piece of art or couldn't find a buyer, so they threw it into the nearest trash can. The woman who found it returned the work to the owner and received a $15,000 reward. Expensive paintings often end up in trash cans. Van Gogh gave his works to various people, but they didn't take them seriously at that time. When these paintings were found many years later, they were estimated at tens of millions of dollars. For example, 
the artist gave his doctor his portrait. The doctor was horrified by the painting. Perhaps he didn't like the red shade of the hair. He gave the portrait to his mother, and she found a use for it. She covered the hole in her chicken coop with the picture. For more than 10 years, chickens had been running under the work of art. Then another artist found the painting. He paid the doctor pennies for it. Now it's estimated at $50 million. A similar case with a discarded work of art occurred in Italy. A gardener who worked at the Ricci Adi Gallery of Modern Art was removing ivy from the building's walls and found a rusty metal door in the thicket. He opened it and got into a dark room. There was a garbage bag lying there. The gardener wanted to throw it in the trash but decided to look inside first. And he found the lost work of famous artist Gustav Klimt. During the renovation of the gallery in 1997, someone stole the painting, Portrait of a Lady. It turned out that the thief had never taken it out of the building. Its value is estimated at $66 million. In 1901, collectors of sea sponges discovered a mysterious chest in the sea near Greece. There was a strange object inside, similar to a mechanical watch and the size of a shoebox. The finding attracted the attention of archaeologists. They quickly established that this item was created in ancient Greece about 2,200 years ago. They called it the Antikythera mechanism. Now it's in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. Scientists have found out that this object is only 82 fragments, one-third of the original mechanism. It's still unknown who created it and how it works. But experts think it was a mechanical computer with bronze gears and other parts. People use it for astronomical calculations. The device could track the movements of the Sun, the Moon, and five planets of the solar system. Experts are still trying to figure out all the properties of this machine. It's considered to be the oldest computer on Earth. It proves that the level of technology 2,000 years ago was much higher than we could imagine. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.